Steps through which every seeker has to travel. These three steps are depending upon three components of our total life. First component is the gross world where we are now, and the gross body where from we are going. This is one component of our. Second component of our body is the I who wants many things from this world to gather good experiences and to fulfill many desires. Such people are constantly searching for that who will fulfill my desires. So at a gross level, gross world and gross body. At the subtler level, the devotion God, why we come to the temple? We don't come for God. We come here, oh Lord, kindly do the following things. Be the watchman of my house because I am going to India for 15 days. So stand around. So, we want to fulfill our desires, but we have no capacity, so we want to invoke his powers through devotion, externally, like external world and subjective body. We will have external God and subjective Kundalini. Then the third stage. Now, this person is neither interested in the world, nor interested in the body, nor interested in God to invoke his devotion to fulfill the desires, nor he is interested in invocation of the Siddhis. When Kundalini is awakened, not Siddhis start manifesting. He is not interested in any one of them. His only concern is, like Bhagavad Gita says, The acme of knowledge is Veda. The ultimate in the Vedas is Upanishads. All the Upanishads put together in Bhagavad Gita. The essence of Bhagavad Gita is 15 chapter. The essence of 15 chapter is this 15 verse. Sarvasya Jam, Radhisandhya Vishraha, Mattaha Smriti Jnanam Apo Anancha Veda Isha Sarvai Aham Yuva Vidya Vedanta Kut Veda Videva Chaham Veda Isha Sarvai Aham Yuva Vidya The ultimate message of the Vedas is Aham Yuva the I Vidya is worthy of knowing This is the only thing ultimate on the spiritual path. This is. So these are the three stages through which one has to go. But what happens when we start our journey? We get lost on the way. First we get lost in this world. We want to do good to the world. We want to make everybody happy. Where God has made us to make us happy. Can we, the miserable, make others happy? See? And oh, life is nothing but frustration. The second thing is, we get into yoga. So the first part is Dharma Shastra. Do good, be good, Dharma Shastra. Satyam Vada, Dharma Vichara, Kajaya, Anma, Prabhadaha, Acharya, Yatriyam, Dharma, Vajatantum, Mahavya, Chesi, Satyana, Prabhadi, Tavyam, 
धर्मांत प्रवचितव्यम भूख के इधर प्रवचितव्यम धर्मशास्त्र डूज एंड डोंट्स then the second comes with the reference to body body means what yoga acrobatics i want for to do yoga so that we live healthy and long for what what for we are doing i don't know i want to live long so such people get lost only at this level then in the evolution takes place in the evolution a person is able to understand when i want something and i get that thing i am happy okay. so he struggles not only to live but to succeed in life the first person is living the second person is living to succeed and success doesn't come on its own you have to put effort our efforts fail then we go to the temple and say to the god oh lord i will uh, offer you uh, one dollar try to see that i get the lottery of one million dollars therefore all our god smile what a bargain is one dollar you got one million dollars so he is interested in fulfilling his desires and for that he wants to know his own potentiality so he gets into his awakening of the good life most of them are meant for going beyond the limitation of the gross world and the gross body here most of us get locked in prison Rare are those. But how many such days? Paranchi khani vetran swayambhu tasmat paran pashchati nantaratman kashchit dhiraha pratyek atma namayikshat avrutta chakshu amrutta tavicha. By default, we are all extrovert. Paranchi khani vetran swayambhu swayambhu the God created us by default extrovert. Paran anchati khani indriyani. All our sense organs are by default extrovert. When you are sitting in the windows of the eyes, you will see outside, not inside. Suppose I go and stand near this window. From the window, I won't see inside. I'll see outside. But I'm different. Kastit dhira ha. Where indeed is one? Pratyek atma na veksha. He is no more interested in the worldly pursuits. Pratyek Atma Na Maikshat He wants to know the truth Enough of this And then Amrutatva Vichyat He wants to discover the ultimate Immortal being that we are Such a person He is a seeker of truth Others are The people who are in the Lowest rank the dharma and yoga they are living a very base life those who are going into devotion and kundalini they are little evolved but still they are in the relative world and those who are seeking the truth they are the seekers so those who are following devotion and kundalini they are believers those who are living in the cross world dharma and yoga they are the uh, ignorant of highest order and the seeker is born when I want nothing but to know the truth when a seeker is born then alone he is qualified for meditation many of us have got this funny thing of course these funny things are told by people like us only meditation for early pregnancy meditation for uh, <laughs> reducing the blood pressure see one day i was going to a gym 
and another person, Swamiji, may I join with you, Juju? I said, come, I have no problem. It is not my place, it is a public place. If you get entry, enter. So when I went, that person said, please come, I went. When the other person, he said, show your um, ID. He said, why? You allowed Swamiji? He said, he is our regular member. We know him. He said, I don't have. Then he said, wait a minute, I will call my boss. So the boss came, the tutor. And he looked at that man. He said, sorry, you cannot come. He became angry. Why I cannot come? When Swamiji can come, I also can come. He said, no, you are a good person, but you should go to hospital, not to the gym. Because you have got fractured legs. You have got a belt in your back. You have got the scratch scratches on which you are coming. With that, can he enter the gym? To enter the gym, you have to be healthy. Exactly. Meditation is for those who are the seekers of truth. Make it very clear. Don't get carried away by the winds of meditation. I also do meditation. On Singapore airport, one person came and uh, I was sitting and my most of my time is on the airports. So I was enjoying the whole tamasha. So one person came, he said, excuse me, um, do you deal in meditation? Looking at my dress, he asked this question. I said, uh, not uh, retail, only wholesale. <laughs> no, I also do meditation. I said, that's your problem. It's not my problem. No, I got only one small uh, difficulty, if you can tell me. I kept quiet. My difficulty is, when I sit for meditation, mind becomes so disturbed, I just can't control the mind. Rest of the things are okay. You could laugh. That time I could not laugh. See friends, simply sitting in one posture for a longer period of time, if that is meditation, all the buffaloes in India are the great yogis. We sit in a comfortable uh, environment and if one mosquito comes and kisses us, we get disturbed. And there, the buffalo is sitting comfortably, even if a truck comes. So her rumination continues, chewing gum. And she says, so what? See, friends, don't make meditation cartoons. We must know a clear picture about spiritual <coughs> life. Meditation is not the goal. Meditation is an experience. See, friends, Meditation is um, not the ultimate in life. Realizing your essential nature, that is the ultimate in life. See friends, not knowing this, we have this funny notion. Do you do meditation? How many hours? I do for one hour. See? Doing meditation is something like doing uh, cooking. Friends, Please remember, <coughs> meditation is not an action. Meditation is an experience. And this is unbroken experience. So we don't have to do meditation. But we have to be in meditation 24-7. But normally, half an hour meditation, rest of the day frustration. It is better, don't do meditation, rather than getting frustrated in life. See friends, therefore let us have a complete picture. What exactly we mean by meditation? First and important thing is, meditation is not an action. Make this example, I take this example to make this point clear. You must have heard or you must have also fallen to pray to that. 
one uh, young boy and girl came to me and they said Swamiji uh, we have fallen in love with each other we have decided to get married please bless us I said I can't bless you now it is too late I can only pray blessings are prophylactic before the disease happens you take the vaccines prophylactic approach but you have already fallen in love so I can only pray to the Lord Bhagwan Bacharo Bicharo ko. A boy and a girl, they do love. For them, love is a verb. I love her. I love him. It's an action. When it begins in time, it will end after some time. See? That is why they rightly say, fallen in love. They don't rise in love. Because it is action. And take another example. The mother has love for the child. Mother has love for the child. So here, love is not an action. It is a noun. It is not a verb. In the same manner. Meditation is not a verb. I do meditation. We have to be in meditation. Then we can remain in meditation 24-7. See friends, this is the first thing about meditation we have to know. For this I will give you a reference. In Bhagavad Gita, yesterday I mentioned shortly, when Bhagavan Sri Krishna glorified an intelligent approach to life and he said that ultimately buddho sharanam anvichya krupanaha palahetava lead your life intelligently don't lead your life mechanically emotionally be realistic in life not emotional not commotional Commotional are those who are lost in activity. Emotional are those who are lost in devotion. All the time you cry, Rama, 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 Rama. You say that Rama is the most miserable God in the world. Eating his head 24-7. Bhagavan says, Buddha Sharana Manvicha. Be intelligent enough. And when this was mentioned, Arjuna asked a question. So, steadiness of wisdom is more important than steadiness of posture. Such a person who is steady in wisdom, for him, what is his lifestyle? What is the meaning of meditation for a man of steady wisdom? How this man of steady wisdom responds in this world, how this man of steady wisdom moves in this world, and how this man of steady wisdom is able to achieve this, what is the foundation? Four questions. In reply to that meditation part, I will tell you, Bhagavan Krishna says, for a man of steady wisdom, meditation is not a half an hour exercise. No. Then he says, Prajahati yada kaman sarvan parthamanogatan. When a person lives at zero desire levels, yada sarvan manogatan kaman prajahati. When one lives at a zero desire level. Desire free existence is living in meditation. If you look within, what we have done in our whole life is only this. Unsuccessful effort to fulfill all our desires. I want this, I want that. No end to it. 
see friends and whenever we are free from desires we are happy example deep sleep in deep sleep we have no desires because we are nobody and therefore we are all happy that is why the people want to sleep because the burden of desire is so much that they want to undo that so sleep is nothing but temporarily deleting the desires from our heart see friend that is called as living in meditation see friends that doesn't mean we should be sleeping all the time in deep sleep therefore we are in meditation no the desire free experience of the deep sleep is also temporary is only during the deep sleep the moment we wake up where is my cup of tea immediately the desire bounces back therefore when like you know bhagwan says in bhagavad gita same chapter yanisha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagrati sayami yasyam jagrati bhutani sanisha pashyato mune like a wise man awakened jagrato mune an awakened master he is awakened to the absolute reality and sleeping to the relative world and the ignorant people are sleeping to the absolute reality and awakened to the relative world this is the basic difference wise man and we stay in the same body same world but he is no more living as the body he is living through the body we are all living as the body for the body on everybody think therefore meditation is freedom from desires lesser the desire we entertain we are in a meditative poise now the question comes how the desires are born desires are born under following conditions number 1 we accept ourselves to be limited by time space and object so we imagine this body i am born on such and such date and this is my size this is my weight time space and object and therefore i am incomplete so to remove the incompleteness we go on imagining if i get that thing i will be complete if i get that thing i will be complete otherwise what can justify that a young healthy intelligent free happy educated well paid boy thinks of getting married what can justify what a life without a wife and after marriage what a life because of the wife so first a desire to get married then the desire to get separate in this manner the desire is born when we accept ourselves to be finite to be incomplete second condition desire is always about something else than ourselves i cannot have the desire for my watch because it's already mine i will have the desire for a nice uh, diamond pendant in your neck because i don't have that think so desire is born when there is a sense of otherness desire is born when there is a sense of incompleteness so these two things are absent in deep sleep in deep sleep we are nobody we have nothing we are neither man woman young old husband wife brother father sister and there is no world there is no sense of otherness therefore no desires what i am telling you don't believe we are not talking about believers i am not addressing the believers i am addressing the seekers you are not in a hospital you are in a gym 
be very attentive about it. So how the desires are born? When I consider myself to be this body I am. Now again start contemplating on this. Can this body be me? The body is not created by us. You may claim I am a self-made man. Born out of binary fission like the amoebas. No. Our body is not created by us. Parents created. The body doesn't listen to us. And yet I am the body. Very intelligent, isn't it? See friends, it is for this purpose. The first step in meditation begins. When we lead our life, we are all expert in blaming others for the problems of our life. This is the routine. We all have default settings. If I am a husband, the problem of my life is my wife. If I am a father, the problem of my life is my children. If I am a guru, the problem is disciples. See friends, till such time, I blame others for the problems of my life. What will be my approach? Try to improve others. So husband's spiritual practice is try to improve wife. Where Bhagwan Ram failed, you the Jagjivan Ram will succeed. But all our efforts are like this only. See the parents, their spirituality is in a, this country particularly I see. When we go to somebody's house, they have got small useless kids. Now they want us to listen to that. Swamiji, my Dabbu, you know, he chants so well. Peta, chant Sanskrit Lok that we taught. And the child is an American child, never listen to parents. And parents are afraid of 911, so they keep quiet. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the mother tells, ha, huh, come on, say, Tameva Mata, say, Tameva Pita, Tameva Bandhu. The mother herself tells the whole shloka and tells, isn't it he chanted well? And he is standing there like Vivekananda, I will not chant. <laughs> Spirituality. These are the cartoons of spirituality. I don't say don't do that, do that. But it has nothing to do with spiritual life. Be the seeker. And the seeker is the one who is able to analyze his experiences, learn from them and grow wise. He is the seeker. Mundoko Upanishad says, Parikshalokan karmachitan brahmanaha nirvedamayar Na asti akrutaha krutena tad vijnanartham guru meva vigachet samit pani shrotriyam brahmanishta. Look back in your life and learn from your own experiences. And if you learn from experiences, nirvidam ayad, you are bound to discover dispassion toward the whole world. If we have lived a good life, a religious life, a proper life, a devotional life, the net result is dispassion towards everything and every being. Dispassion does not mean depression. See, dispassion is willful giving the things without regrets. It is a healthy condition of the mind. Depression is unhealthy condition of the mind. So this body under all conditions cannot be me. Therefore, the first destination in meditation is get freedom from body identification. Don't struggle. I want to see God. We sit like this thing and then and then start. Where to see the God? Then you see, you have to see in the Brumadya and they keep on doing it. And afterwards, God is not seen, but headache is guaranteed. Don't get lost in that useless things. That is not the truth. See, friends, it is essential. 
that we have to learn. The first problem is body identification. Give up the body identification, you have conquered one fortress in your spiritual quest. It is for this purpose we begin meditation. See friends, till such time I am identified with the body, then I am mother, father, brother, sister, husband, wife. And who are miserable? These guys are miserable. When they are born, they are born the moment we are identified with the body. In the deep sleep, we were not husband, mother, father, etc. That is the reason. In deep sleep, when husband and wife sleep together, husband snores loudly because he is no more afraid of his wife. The one who cannot dare open his mouth in front of his wife. In deep sleep, how can he dare snore loudly? Because who cares? I have no more husband. And again, the moment you get a... Honey, shall I get tea for you or coffee? This is universal truth. In all the houses, it is the husband who wakes up early, prepares tea and gives to the Maharani. And then the Maharani becomes a little bit activated. <laughs> so all these bodies are born after body identification. And who are disturbed? These bodies are disturbed. <coughs> Husband is disturbed, man is never disturbed. Mother is disturbed, the woman is never disturbed. And when they are born, after body identification. So who has the desires? The body doesn't have the desires. It is somebody has the desire. And the somebody's are born after body identification. Therefore, meditation is no more living as the body, but start living through the body. So the first and the second step in meditation will be, we have to recognize we are not because of the body, but the body is because of us. In deep sleep, when we are not identified with our body, are we not existing? We continue to exist. In the dream, we go through good and bad experiences. That time also, our gross body is not needed. Then who are we? We are independent, other than the body. To tell this principle, all the law of karma is told. Normally what happens, the husband and the wife complain about each other. One husband complains, Swamiji, why my wife of all the people is so terrible? I said, look here, in the last life, you have tortured her. Therefore, during that time she was doing Karvachot. And she has again taken birth as your wife. She is taking the revenge now. But I don't remember anything, never mind, God's computer doesn't fail. But what should I do now? Now behave properly with her. Otherwise, next life, again she will be your wife. No, no, no. I am ready to do anything. Let it be the last life. Now see the net result. Net result is that husband will stop blaming the wife. He will start behaving properly with her. He will be at peace. And when he did something bad in the last life, that time this body was not there, but he was there. In this body he is there. In the next life he will suffer or enjoy, not through this body, but other body. <coughs> Therefore, what is the conclusion? Conclusion is, we are someone other than the body. It is for this purpose, meditation is advised to discover we are Living in the body, the embodied, we are not the body. Simply start imagining, if you are not the body, means what? See friends, it is for this purpose, 
आसन प्राणायाम प्रत्याहार धारणा ध्यान समाधि एवरीथिंग इज देर देर फोर फ्रेंड्स मेडिटेशन वेन यू आर डूइंग इट और सिटिंग फॉर मेडिटेशन कीप दीज पॉइंट इन व्यू डोंट स्टार्ट एक्रोमेटिक्स ऑफ मेडिटेशन सिटिंग इन ए पर्टिकुलर पोस्टर एंड मेकिंग दैट पदमासना एंड देयर पेन हियर पेन देयर पेन पेन एवरी वेयर and then you get locked up and then you have to call the police please help me is nobody don't do that remain as you are so asana we will learn today how the asana is practice with a goal to get freedom from body identification don't bother about god leave him alone See, so when we have to practice this, some uh, technical details must be known. You have seen this tripod of my camera. It is steady. The reason being, the center of gravity of the structure is exactly in the center. Similarly, this mic tripod. This is steady. because the center of gravity is properly placed if the center of gravity is displaced it will fall in the same manner many of us when we sit for meditation what happens our center of gravity gets displaced sometime the weight falls on the right leg or left leg so when it falls on the right leg the right leg becomes numb because the blood flow and the limbs flow gets arrested so there is a numb feeling then we get pain here then we shift to the left side then gives this also pain then we straighten our legs that also gives pain in the hands and then we sleep the reason is the asana is not kept properly so what is required is as most of you are sitting when you are sitting see that the distance between your knees the distance between the knee and the backbone the distance between the knee and your neck is approximately same that is your cone equilateral cone now normally the weight of our body is not properly placed therefore the numb sensation comes so as you are sitting the sitting bones they are called as pin bones or in medical term ischia bones these two bones on which the weight of our body should land the two sitting bones on that the weight of our body should land for that if required you can open your legs or close them but see that the weight lands over there not on the thighs or on your ankles then we have to keep the hands for photography this hand posture is good only for photography if you keep it like this after a few moments the hands will pull the body in front and then the center of gravity will be displaced and exclamation will become a question mark and a question mark will become a underline chodo yaar to ja therefore keep your hands in your lap not somebody else's lap acha baitho no your lap and the mudra is interlock the lower three fingers index to index and thumb to thumb in this manner keep this way in your own lap now there are two things that have happened your base is firm and vertically your body is steady now what more parameter has to be added and that is the body should be 100% relaxed so that you can get out of the body like parking the car in a parking lot not worried about the towing van in the same manner keep your body on the asan 
in such a manner that once it is placed, you don't think about body. Now, the third portion is the instructions I will give and in that instruction, you will slowly get out of the body identification. Before that, some psychological adjustments are necessary. I <coughs> will give those instructions. Now sit comfortably as you are sitting. First, psychological adjustments. We are here by our own choice. Nobody has compelled us. We are not here under force. Therefore, we are happy. A miserable person is not qualified for meditation. Second thing, in our heart is our Guru and our beloved Lord. We are not alone. The Lord protects us from within. Guru guides us from within. The third adjustment, we have to drop our total past. Summation of the total past is equal to Mr. Somebody. So to drop the total past, let us take the position. At this moment, I am Mr. Nobody. Nobody has no past. So you are in the present. The fourth adjustment we don't plan anything what we will do after a meditation. Therefore, the future is blocked. The present without the past and the future is now fully available. Now remaining in the present, we start the next step. When I give instructions, your body will understand and follow the instructions unless you come in between my instructions and your body. Don't ask questions why and how. It will happen. Relax the head muscles. Relax the forehead, the eyebrows, Relax the eyeballs. Don't focus them on anything. Let them be focused on infinite. Close the eyelids soft. Let there be no pressure exerted on the eyeballs. You are not seeing anything. Relax the nose, the lips, chin. Relax the face, 
the ears, relax the neck from all the four sides, throat, below ears and the back side. and down the shoulders. They are lifted for no reason. It is here the ego is strong. Relax. Relax the shoulder joints, the upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, palms, and all the fingers. Let us pause for a moment and see the body is divided in two parts, relax and not yet relax. The relaxed areas are with minimum tension, minimum muscle tone, the weight of our hands has increased in our lap, the index fingers and the thumbs are pressing hard against each other. and the rest of the body is still tense. Recognize this difference between these two aspects of the body. Now come back to your shoulders. Now let us relax the main trunk. Relax the chest. Go downwards, abdomen, right up to the base. Relax, relax, relax. Relax the sides, below the shoulders, right up to the hip joints. Both sides go downwards and relax, relax. Now go back side from the neck along the spine, go downward, relax all the back muscles. Go downwards, the thorax area, the lumbar area, right up to the pelvic and up to the sitting bones. Relax, relax, relax. Now the second observation. The weight of our body has increased on the base. Sometimes one may get pulsation on the sitting bones because the weight has increased. Relax the hips the hip joints, relax the thighs, knees, calves, ankles, relax the heels and the toes. as if you walk out of your body. In this hall there are so many bodies sitting 
and one of them we claim to be us and ours. So take the front view of your body from outside, the head, forehead and part by part go downwards. If you come across patches of tensions, iron them out, go up to the base. Go to the right side of your body. Don't forget you are outside your body. Take the right view. The head, the right ear, the right side of the neck. And just go downwards up to the right hip joint. Relax, relax. The weight on your right pin bone or the sitting bone has increased. Go to the back side of your body. Don't forget you are outside. Take the complete back view of your body from outside, starting from the head along the neck, go downward slowly. Relax, relax, relax. Right up to the sitting bones. Now come to the left side of your body. Repeat the same exercise. Here you will observe there are more tensions on the left side because the other three sides were relaxed. So if there are tensions, relax them out. Go downwards slowly up to the hip joint. Well done. Now come in front of your body. One more observation, the shape, size, the contour line defining the body has become extremely nondescript. They are not clear. Hence, the concept of inside the body and outside the body has become null and void. Now there is only one experience of homogeneous conscious existence. The individual mind which was formed because of the shape and the size of the body, that aspect of the mind is dropped. 
Now we have merged in one common universal mind. which takes care of life and the functioning of life in all the living beings in the whole universe. This principle of life is common everywhere. So the body has disappeared from the mind. And yet we continue to exist. Therefore, this experience should confirm that our existence is independent of the body. The body is because of me, I am not because of the body. This is just an experience of body free independent existence. by the Divine Grace, this experience becomes a firm conviction as a result Relations and possessions are no more an issue for us.
then we start living in meditation 24/7 relations and positions will continue to be as they are but they won't bother us anymore effortlessly are not doing anything you are not seeing anything it is just being without becoming anybody They see the experience of total loss. You won't get anything because we have dropped everything: the body, the ego, the relation, the possession. and it is not created through action ends it won't end this is our essential nature like the electrical energy expresses through the bulb as light in the same manner the one divine reality expresses through every body as life 
differences on account of the body become null and void when we are rooted in this absolute self. Take deep breath slowly, two, three times and observe how the body is now included in the mind. The mind has taken the shape of the body like the gold takes the shape of an ornament. Move your toes and fingers. Now the concept that I am inside the body and the world is outside has become real. And the samsara begins. Offer this experience at the feet of the Lord, which will not be repeated. Every meditation is a unique experience. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnahat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Jona Maha Hari Om